This is me, the Undead Viking, and this is Dawn of Peacemakers. This is a cooperative game in which each person is going to be taking on the role of an adventurer who is not looking, for once, to attack or destroy a dungeon or, you know, take down an evil tyrant or anything like that. This is a game where all the players are taking on the role of peacemakers, people that are trying to basically hold this country together and prevent out all a war from occurring. Uh, so uh, it, it, it's a little bit you know, different, obviously. Uh, it's not, not what we're used to. And it's going to have, when, when it's published, it's going to have like awesome miniatures and everything like that. And so people are going to see it. They're going to say, oh, look, it's like a big giant dudes on a map, like miniatures kill each other game. And there is a skirmish variant that you can play uh, that like will allow you to play it like that. But that is not the, the core of the game. The core of the game is playing this campaign of these these adventurers who are just actively trying to make sure that these, you know, peace can prevail over war which is definitely an interesting theme and one that I've seen kind of reflected in a lot of games recently um, that, you know, just kind of like spinning theme on its ear a little bit and, and, and playing a, a different uh, aspect uh, when it comes to like games like uh, this War of Mine. Um, oh, I'm gonna think of. I'm gonna forget the other names, but I mean, it's 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 definitely something that that is is being grasped and looked at, and I'm pretty excited about like the fact that we're kind of opening doors like and and getting away from the tropes uh, that 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 board games have. So uh, let me show you kind of a brief overview of how the game works. Uh, it is a card-driven game. You're gonna have cards that are gonna direct your adventures on the board, and they're going to interact with two armies that are fighting each other. And what they're gonna be doing is trying to keep those armies alive, but also trying to kind of break down their wills and 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 get them to like get to the point where they want to fight anymore and they leave the battle so i'll show you how the game is played and then we'll come back here and i'll give you my final thoughts okay so here you go this is peacemakers and i got ahead and set up the first scenario now um this is basically just to show you the mechanisms of the game i'm going to go into a lot more detail as far as the theme of the game and like um, just how the game kind of evolves a little bit. There is a lot of surprises and twists and turns, and I'll talk about those. Not exactly, because I want when you play the game yourself uh, to be able to experience those twists and turns. But uh, you, it, it's just one of those things that it should be noted that um, the mechanisms will actually change as the game is played. Um, you will unlock certain uh, aspects of the game. I, I, it's one of those weird things where I, I want to talk to you about it, but I can't talk to you about it, right? You know, I mean, I want to, I want to like divulge more and more of, of of what this game is all about. But half the fun of, is playing through the campaign and having it, uh, you know, the, the game kind of unravel and open up and and describe those things to you. Um, so, uh, my daughter and I, we played through uh, the vast majority of the campaign that we have. As I said, this is a prototype, so, um, you know, I don't know if we have everything. So, what we played is probably very likely going to be what's published, but, um, you know, it is one of those things where um, we can... Uh, I think we saw most of it, if you will. But I'll talk about that uh, in just a little bit. So, um... I set up the the, the, the the scenario book that will tell you how to set up the board and these are tiles as you can see this is a double sided board in the reverse there is like kind of a desert side um, that's not much of a spoiler so to speak um, there is a deck of these resource cards which the players will be using to play to take actions with their adventurers there um, there are the two armies you have um, the ocelots over here and then you have the macaws over here and both of these armies will have like the, you'll get these cards so like the, the ocelots they have their warriors and they have their archers and like you can see how much damage they do like any defense they have how much health they have you know if they have any range attacks how far away they can be to do range you know that sort of thing um and then over on the other side we have a macaw soldier which is you know, once again pretty much well, it is exactly the same as the 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 warrior there, and then there is the, actually the the general of the thing. So, uh, cautious leader, uh, if Soshiyamak is injured, lower his side's motivation by one step. Now you might be saying, well, what's motivation? Well, motivation is what's going to keep um, these armies in the battle and want to keep them fighting, and they are represented by both of these. Uh, 
steps here. And you'll see that on the, all the way down on the bottom at zero, you'll see these red flags. And that means that that side surrenders. And you don't want that. What you want is that at one turn, both of those motivations to be in green on either side. Because basically what that happens is, is neither side wants to continue fighting, they call a truce, and they retreat from the field of battle. And that's exactly what you want. Now, if you fail the scenario, it doesn't necessarily mean that like you failed the game. It just means that when that happens, what you're going to end up doing is you're going to go to uh, the, the, the scenario booklet and it's going to tell you exactly how to set up for the next uh, story. So that's the, one of the cool things I like is that because of that, like you just because you play the game more than once, you could have a different outcome, if you will. Something that I think that was really nice. But anyway, uh, just a couple other things that you can see in front of you. Uh, each side has these order and... Uh, ploy, uh, like task and, and ploy desks for their order. After all the players uh, act and, and use their resource cards for what they want to do, um, what they will then get is that then we'll draw cards for each army and then we'll the, the, that'll tell us exactly what those armies are going to do. Um, along the way, um, basically what the players are going to be doing is they are going to be traveling along the armies, um, healing units, um, they're going to be looking at these cards, looking at the decks, and reshuffling them and changing them up and trying to make sure that they get certain cards to play. I'll talk about that, that in a little bit. Um, and, and, like, the big thing is that you're going to be fortifying units and things like that so they can take more damage if they get attacked. And you're just going to be trying to figure out what each side is going to do on their turn and try to push them towards a stalemate so you can get their motivations down. All right, so just, I'm gonna just show you some of the resource cards here quick. Um, so resource cards have three different uh, functions, well actually four technically. Um, they have these three icons here. That is an influence icon, that is movement, and that is fortification. And then it has a, uh, like a, 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 a like, uh, uh, like the, t the text down here is like an action you can take. When you play one of these cards, you can do one of those four things. Uh, you can use it for influence, uh, movement, fortification, or use the word. So in this case, you could use this for one influence, you could use this for two movement, you could use it for one fortification, or all companion units have guard during this round. When it says companion units, that means it's units that your adventurer is with. And so, like, they will be telling the one. So, but you aren't necessarily on a side. You're just trying to get both sides to a point where they, you know, will be alive, but they will have lost the will to continue fighting. Okay, some of these cards, like this one, like Emergency Care, um, you can see has uh, choose a damage companion unit and remove two damage tokens from it. So you can use these things to heal and keep them moving. Um, some of them uh, will allow you to, here I'll grab one here. Um, okay, actually this is a good card to show you. So look at the top order card from any army. So normally influence allows you to do this, but but with a influence card, you can only look at the ones that are that you're near. Um, but this one will allow you to look, and that's the big thing that you're going to be doing a lot of on your turn. Now, now depending upon the number of players, you're going to have a certain number of these cards. There's no hand limit. Um, like with two players, each person starts with two cards, and they're going to draw two at the end of the round. Um, so you and you can use up as many cards as you want on your turn. You can save some. If you don't play any, you can you can discard one and draw another one if you so desire, like the card that you have really isn't helpful. So you have multiple options as far as that is concerned. Um, the big thing is that you're going to be wanting to go through these decks. I'm just going to look at these really quick. I, I mean, they're functionally the same, um, though these are do get created uh, depending upon the types of units that are going to be played. And plus, and this is, might have been tough to see, you can see like this has this like a, like a star edge around it. And like this one has a circle edge around it. Now in in the the final game, those will be plastic and molded. But so like here, let me grab those actually so I can show you. Um, what these do is like you can see like this would be an uh, uh an like you strike you know strike with units in this circle group. So if you had when you drew that, if you had units like this that were next to other units that they, so they could attack them, um, then they would, you know, be able to, you know, do that strike attack. But you would not do it for your star uh, that's over there. Um, so, like, and there's also, like, you know, so then here's one with that star 
on there. So you would strike with that and the other ones wouldn't go. And what happens is that you, when you decide to use influence to look at the cards, you then get to put them back on the top of the deck in the order that you want. So if you have a situation where maybe, you know, you have uh, you have a unit, you have a couple of units that are like next to like other ones, and then you drew and it said that, you know, like maybe you uh, drew this card and it said strike, and then like you you drew like, and maybe because you, each point of influence allows you to draw one card. So you're gonna, you were gonna draw a card. So let's say you drew two cards with influence. And let me grab that off the ground. If, if you drew these two, and it said, um, like you have this option for cover, and you have an option for strike. So cover, units in this group gain plus two guard, plus two defense uh, this round, or attack with units in this group. So this one was the top one, let's say. So you drew these two cards, you turn them over, and you're like, well, eh, I don't want that, right? And so you're going to go ahead and like you're going to put the cover on top. So when you draw these cards, instead of having them attack and possibly do damage and kill another person on the battlefield, you're actually going to get them defense. So when you draw the card that maybe had like the strike on it, let's say like you couldn't do anything with that, so you have the strike, and they, those, those attack, they're going to get that bonus to defense that's going to help them survive those attacks. Now, ploy cards are a little bit different. A lot of these ploy cards will tell you what speed certain things will be. So regular means it's going to be at normal speed. Uh, like, so you have other ones that, let's see here. Let me find one that with a different speed here. So here, like here's a ploy that has slow speed. So slow speed would be faster than normal speed when you're going to be resolving those actions. So like, you know, and, and you can see, and this is kind of tough to tell, but th this one has this insignia on it. This one has this insignia on it. That's the macaws, and this is the uh, the ocelots. And so like, if you had, when you're going to be comparing those, the slow speed would happen after that one. So, and, and it determines like the, the speed of those particular actions. But ploys, the big thing about what your ploys are looking for, and some of them are like um, bold, uh, roll the d12, they, notice there's a d12 that's included, Based on the result, each unit in this group may gain or lose, uh, you know, you know, attack ability uh, for this round. Um, but the big thing here, you know, I gotta find one. So this is revoked. This is the one that you want to find. So, at the start of the army phase, cancel a task part of this order, and then lower this motiv side's motivation by one. Now, there are two of these cards in each one. You know, let me find the other one here. There's a so. If you're if you're tr you're trying to hit these particular cards and you're trying to get through the deck. Now these are obviously shuffled and you can hopefully hit them at, and 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 get to them at some point. But you that's one of your goals is that's do it. Now you can lower motivation by having these units destroyed. If a unit gets killed, that's going to lower their motivation. But here's here's the problem. If you lose all of them, then your motivation immediately goes down to zero, and that side surrenders. So. The, the premise, and, and especially like in the, the first campaign, the first scenario, the whole idea is that you're going to be like moving, like when you draw these two cards, so let me just draw two here. So this one says strike, and then this one has that, you know, slow on there. So there would be a slow strike. They would attack anything that was close to them. And so then you just determine the attack values of, of those particular actions. Now remember, we used that cover card. Let's just say we did that. So these two had the cover of plus two. However, they are in the river, which has these the, the, this little breaks. It's, it's tougher to defend yourself in the river. So what you would do is that you're going to be like, you would look at each one of those units, and you would say, okay, well, so the macaw, they have an attack of three. And, and so they would be attacking the person right next to them. And so uh, the ocelots, they have, you know, zero defense, um, but, but we gave them, you know, with the cover of plus two, but unfortunately they're going to lose one. So they're going to have one defense. So it is one of those games where you're just going to, like, it's going to be deterministic, where you're going to have attack of three, and then you are going to, oh, actually, I apologize, because if we look here at this thing, it's like each unit in this group has minus one, for this round, uh, so we would they, they would have one less. So they only have attack of two compared to our defense of one. So that'd be one point of damage. However, 
if we, you know, so if you, you, you might have had different, like, you, there are times when, like, you, you can build fortifications on different things, and, like, fortifications, like, are, are represented by uh, these, these cubes. But in this case, like, each one of those units would take a point of damage. Now, if there's fortifications, they do get destroyed as they take damage. So you would just put, you know, one of like these little st like little tokens on there to show that those had taken damage and you have to move the damage tokens with them obviously so you can keep track but at this point because of the fact that you've done all that work and and those are the two cards then that would be it so now this other side if we have so we we had cover uh so for for our units that were there that did that and then you know not why oh, you know this guy isn't dead let's put him back on there and then so uh you know, and then the, the ploy card uh, for this one, let me just show this one to you actually. It says, roll the d12, re-roll until a group with units is chosen. Replace this insignia of this order's task card with the rolled insignia for this round. The ploy takes priority over special effects. So, actually, in actuality, what would happen is, is that we would have to roll this. And, remember, and if you'll notice that it has these different um, possible outcomes like square, star, and that little, like, um, gear kind of look to it, you would roll that, and then instead of being a circle, it would have, it would have, or a star would have gone to probably the circle. So thought maybe they would have lost their cover, right? But, and this is all these things where uh, you have to kind of figure out what both cards are going to be working. And you can also probably tell how it, with only probably two cards for each player, trying to figure out exactly what these cards are, getting into the positions, getting, you know, building fortifications, you know, for, for different uh, different units that, that you think would need fortifications to protect them. Like, trying to make sure that, oh, and I didn't even attack with this guy. This guy gets to attack as well. And in this case, he would attack that one. There's like kind of a counterclockwise. And there's a really good um, uh, description of, of who they will target you know, with these particular attacks or whatever. So, uh, you know, and, you know, theoretically also, you know, it's like like one of our units would probably have been there maybe, and that's when they built those fortifications because you can build fortifications in the spot that you're in or in locations next to you. And, you know, like these would, you know, probably likely be over here because they would be trying to influence and trying to look at those cards and being in the same spot as those companion units. So, you know, technically they probably still wouldn't have been on that bridge, but... This is where the tr trouble of this this particular game comes, is you know using these resource cards and having the right resource cards for the right moment to not only get to the spots that you need to go, build build the fortifications if you're building fortifications, healing units if you're looking at healing units, but also looking at these uh, different task cards because you don't get to look at one. You get for each influence you get to look at one, and so. Like in this situation, like maybe we didn't even know or we looked at that, but we had no idea what the ploy card was because we looked at the top two cards of the, you know, the, 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 the task and not the ploy. So there's these two order cards. So we looked at that. We replaced cover to give them more, more defense, but we had no idea that this was going to happen. And so in that situation, like we thought that we were, t we were protecting Star, but... In actuality, what we probably ended up doing, because we had to roll this, and then if we got a circle like I just did, we would, this, he would be undercover, which really didn't help us. So in actuality, because we had no idea this would happen, we would do our full amount of damage. They wouldn't have two guard. This one would attack, thankfully, with two, because we lose one, so they take two damage. This one would take a total of four because he would get attacked twice. One, two, three, four. And I believe he has a health of five. So he's still alive. However, that particular uh, warrior is not happy right now and is likely not going to last very much longer because you can see the health of five. And he's taken four points of damage. So now with the next turn, maybe we're going to figure out something where we're able to either heal uh, that particular unit, or like, you know, with that one I showed you that shows that being able to heal it, or there are ones that allow us to uh, uh, actually move it uh, along with us when we take our, uh, when we go ahead and move.
here, right here, this friendly guide. You may move one companion unit one space with you while you travel during this turn. Units cannot be moved to a space containing any units. So if we had that card maybe on our next turn, we would, as, you know, this adventure, we would maybe move two, and we'd move them two away from the battle. You know, so he wouldn't be able to take any more damage, maybe because we didn't want to. But ultimately, sometimes you have to let one die, right? Because that will decrease the motivation of that particular uh, side for that time. Um, you know, it, it's, this is a very, very basic uh, scenario. And, and like I said, you don't win or lose depending upon if one side wins or loses. You're just going to unlock the next set of the story. However, um, it is still difficult, right? When I played this, I didn't, I mean, it, it, it was one of those things where I felt like this side had the advantage because they had four over three. And it, it, it seemed like it was one of those things where it was very difficult uh, for me to to keep them alive. Now, one of the nice things is, and I didn't, I, I put those there just so you can see how the combat works. There's a lot of different rules as far as combat. If, like, a lot of times, like, uh, units won't move because they're able to attack from the spot that they're at. So, like, necessarily those units probably wouldn't have been in the river. But I wanted to actually show you, like, the different, uh, like, effects of that. And there's also other effects, like, so the, here, like, in these rocks, uh, they get a bonus, um, to their uh, to their guard, if they take over a tower, they actually get a bonus to their motivation. So that's one of those things where it's like, um, because they're such a good location, uh, like you can, you, you, they, if they take it, that can be a bad thing because a side will then you know like gain motivation and will to continue fighting. So there's other things they have to keep in mind. These spots, these four spots, um, they are they're stealth locations, and so they cannot be attacked unless it's somebody right next to them. So this person with a, with the bow couldn't shoot this particular unit because of the fact that it couldn't see it. But you know, a, a, a soldier right next to it could attack them because they could see where they are exactly. So each uh, scenario just has a definitive ending. What in this particular one, we want to get both of these down into the green without one side losing the battle. If you do that, um, you check to see either basically either that happens or one of these sides gives up and surrenders either or they're wiped off the board. They are destroyed entirely. Depending upon which one of those outcomes happen, you will then check uh, the, the scenario book, and the scenario book will tell you exactly what to do with the next part of the campaign, and then you will, like, set up another map, and you'll play through that, and you'll continue on with the story. So, the the game is, 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 is relatively simple. It's just one of those things where you never seem to have enough resources, enough time to do exactly what you want to do. Um, it, and... It is one of those things with more players, it becomes easier. Because the thing is, like, if you're playing it solo, you get all four cards in your hand. If you're playing with two, each person gets two cards. If you're playing with four, each person has one card. And you have to work together and have and talk to each other about what each person should or shouldn't do on their turn to try to, like, you know, like, play to your strengths and play to your abilities. But, you know, and there's going to be times, though, that it doesn't matter what, you're just not going to have the right card for the right situation, and you're just going to have to roll with it, roll with the damage, do damage control, and move forward to the next turn. So let me talk more about the game and, and like, the kind of the story and the campaign and everything uh, in my final thoughts. All right, so I know a lot of you probably thought, okay, so, like, is this a legacy game? Now, I'm not going to... It isn't a legacy game because it, you aren't ripping stuff up in the game, right? A legacy to me means that you're opening up stuff, you're cutting up cards, you're like destroying and you can't ever go back. I mean, there are cool little secret things, like here's like the container number one that eventually you're told to open. Um, there's like envelope number one that you're told to open eventually and things like that. Stuff that I can't really show you because I want to have the surprise be there for you. But it is not a, a game that is destroyed and you can't go back. You can, as I said, you the storyline can take place in a different realm or a different avenue, if you will. And the story's great, I, and that's all I can say, really. I mean, it's fantastic. It has lots of cool things that happen. Um, it definitely it int introduces new rules and new situations and things that are just going to keep you on your toes and are constantly you're constantly going to be like, oh wow, you know, 
what's new here? What are we going to do here? How is this changing? You know, and and I there's a big giant campaign deck of cards, and I'm not going to show it to you because it's like it's huge, but it'll basically tell you you'll unlock certain parts of that, and then it'll say, okay, here's here's what you unlock, and here's what you have this time, and you're going to go and you're going to play that. Now, admittedly, some of the surprise won't be there when you go back uh, to play it again, but you still can play it again, and it is it is very satisfying, and it is like you know. I like the fact that you can get partial victories. I like that a lot. You know, it isn't just all or nothing. It's like, okay, well, you you, you could have done better, but let's 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 figure out what we did wrong and let's let's move forward and we can do better next time. And like we we can make up the ground that we lost in the next campaign. I I, I enjoyed that aspect of it. Functionally and and mechanism wise, the game's just really fun. I I like the idea of moving my 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 general like my adventures amongst the generals and the arm the soldiers of the army. You know, helping one side for a while. And then going to the other side and helping that side for a while. And like, you know, you're just basically trying to keep them alive. Trying to get to those order revoke cards, you know, so you can, you know, get the motivation to go down without people dying. And there is kind of a poignancy when, like, you realize that if you let, like, a certain person die, um, it's going to drop their motivation down to the point where you're going to win that scenario. And it's kind of like, oh, so there is that kind of weird moment where you're like, is it worth it? You know, and that this one, this one soldier dies so that thousands more may live. And it's kind of poignant and it's kind of interesting and it's a good way to, it, it, it taught my daughter who was playing the game with me a really good story, a really good idea, that element. And I saw her mind clicking through and thinking about that. And I think that's really excellent. So ultimately the game's just a lot of fun. It's got a really great story. It's got, you know, it looks cool, it plays out cool and we just couldn't wait to get to the next chapter, and I think that's why it's awesome. So, if you're looking for a cooperative game, or even a solo game, that's going to kind of spin themes on their ear, and, and, and present you with great challenges and a wonderful story, I would strongly suggest uh, you take a, take a look at Dawn of Peacemakers. So, if you have any questions about it, ask away. I'll be happy to answer those as best as I can. As always, thank you very much for your time, and until next time, uh, I'm the Viking, telling you... Have yourself one heck of an awesome day. All right, bye-bye.